was guns, knives, and tools, man. And this is like, hey, man, that's like, that's their, that's their telescope right there, man. You know, man, you got to have a telescope every now and then. Like, yeah, boy, going to get her done. Anyway, man, so here we go. This is the five-inch uh, Astronomers Without Borders telescope. It's a five-inch five Doxonian, which basically means, <coughs> hey, man, it's got a mirror, man. And, you know, you know, it got, hey, man, it's got two mirrors. So, you know, that's the way it works. Now, it's collapsed right now. If you want to look it up, you can actually see it extended. But basically what it does is it takes that there lightage man, puts it through a mirror, sends it through another mirror to an eyepiece. Now this whole thing, it's collapsed right now because I got this one because it's a portable version. It extends out man all the way. Uh, this is for a portable version it's also a great beginner's uh, telescope. Now, <clears throat> it's, you know, 250 bucks. $94 of it goes to charity. Uh, goes to the, uh, the funding, the Astronomers Without Borders project. Uh, you know, you have some adjustments on the back as far as getting it into collimation. I'm not going to get into all of that. Has an inch and a half eyepiece. Has a uh, red sight. You know, and anybody who this, there, or the other can use a red dot sight. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> now, very easy to operate. Now, what have I done to this scope to make it different? One, I put a little, little lube, man. You got to have a little lube right there which gives a little resistance, but it also makes it a little more stable. Now, what I used was my go-to Nio gel. Uh, this is 779ZC, which is what we use on our flashlights and everything we're gonna take underwater. Uh, <clears throat> and it lubricates O-rings, that kind of crap. Now, that gave it a little bit of, woo, oh God. It feels so good. Got to have a little bit of lube every now and then, boy. So then we go over on the other side. And I'll have to pan down just a little bit. I basically took a North Face fanny pack. Go back a little bit. I took a North Face fanny pack and uh, hung that, that, their, uh, that their handleage man over the knob, man. You can see the knob there, man. And then wrapped it around it, cut the ends off, burn it. <clears throat> so that all of my accessories for this telescope are mounted right there. Now, what accessories do I have in it? Not very many. Of course, got a headlamp, uh, that red light, because you don't want white light uh, when your eyes are adjusted to the dark. I have a, a Celestron um, sun, uh, moon filter. Just take, it makes it a little bit easier on your eyes at night. I'll show you how that's used here in a second. <clears throat> I've got a few other little accessories, but they're not here. Now let's go backwards before we start. Making a mess, man. And don't make no messes, boy. So you pull it out. And of course, it comes with a collimation eyepiece. What a collimation eyepiece is, is it just allows you to make sure that your mirrors and the eyepiece are aligned. And you'll have to learn how to do collimation. That's not something I can show you on an easy video. It comes with a... Oops, a super 10 long eye relief, uh, which I think this is a four element lens. It's uh anyway, it's not that bad of a lens. 
Not bad at all. Um, but it's four element. You have a large dopteric hole there. Um, dopteric. Large diameter. Large dopteric. Anyway, 10 millimeter. And it also comes with a... Super 25 wide angle, you know, long eye relief, whatever. This is a 25. So we have a 25 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. Uh, I think this is a four element. Wow, what the hell is on that? There's something on that lens, boy. Huh. I gotta get on that, boy. Oh, there's something in there. Anyway, it's a process. Works if you work it. <laughs> Damn, it's still there. Well, I gotta get on that. Now, what I have added to it, of course, was the moon filter, <clears throat> which is basically a pair of sunglasses, and then I ordered a uh, Teleview 2x barlow so what the 2x barlow does is it doubles the magnification of any of these which it turns a 25 into a 12 and a half and it turns the 10 into a 5 <clears throat> i bought teleview because teleview makes uh, very high quality products and uh i've used some of their other lenses uh now this is as i said just their barlow lens I've got some other Teleview lenses, but uh, that's not really for this this thing. Um, of course, you've got other sections where you can put stuff and all kinds of stuff in here. So, <clears throat> anyway, now you've got a telescope. You've got some lenses. You've got some accessories. You've added a Barlow to it. You've added a moon filter to it. Uh, and now we have a ability to actually store the stuff on it. Now... Uh, that's all great and stuff, but how are you going to know what to actually look at? Um, well, <laughs> that gets a little less complicated than you think. Now, this was 250 bucks. You know, the filter was probably 20 and then the uh, Barlow lens, you can buy whatever you want. <clears throat> One thing that I would recommend is uh, the star chart. Guide to the Stars, Northern Hemisphere. Uh, if, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can do whatever you want. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, so what you do is you take your month, your time. So let's say it is August. And it's going to be, you know, August whatever. So you take your date, you put your time on it. That's what you're going to see in the sky. Face south, face north, blah, blah, blah. You look through there, you see Polaris. You know, that's just where it is. Or that Polaris is your center point in the northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere, it's a little bit more complicated. One thing cool about this is it has stuff all over it. I mean, if you read all this stuff, flip it over. Uh, your first night's out. Telescope and binocular objects because you can use a teles you can use a binoculars too. Uh, some mythology, uh, the moon, phases of the moon, meteor showers, celestial tidbits, the planets. Uh, it's got a moon map on it <coughs> right there. And then if you look astro timeline, it goes through the time. If you read all the way around it, it goes through, you know, that's draw, uh, you know, <laughs> it gives, it's just, it's just full of information. Highly recommend it. It's about 20 bucks. Then, at Cambridge Star Atlas, uh, this is the fourth edition. Now, this one's spiral bound just so they can lay flat. Uh, and of course, I've used this one a little bit. Um, but, you know, 
They keep adding to this thing all the time. As I said, this is the fourth edition, which is the current edition. Uh, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing, man. 90 pages, uh, for what it costs. Um, it's, it's done by Will, uh, Turian. It, it's a really good, really good book. Um, uh, and to learn and get into the hobby, uh, this is the book that I would recommend. The Backyard Astronomer's Guide, fourth edition, uh, you know, the last edition was for the, you know, up till it's got a lot of stuff. It's even got charts. Uh, you know, it's got, uh, well, whatever. Uh, so getting started, choosing a telescope. Uh, the Telescopic Universe, Capturing the Cosmos, um, blah, blah, blah. And in all of these, they have sub-categories, this, there, or the other. Those were just the parts. Photographing the sky, uh, you know, observing the sun, moon, eclipses, moon tours, you know, choosing a telescope, choosing an eyepiece of filters. That kind of stuff. Anyway, we got an eye and tools, and this is the tool that I'm using to view the super moon tonight. Now, <clears throat> this loophole spotting scope would also work on a tripod, you know. Got a pretty good size lens on it, which is the, your collector. And then it's variable magnification. But this is quite a bit more expensive, especially because this is uses milliradians. So it's got the, it's the full military version. Now, but you can use binoculars, you can use whatever you want. This guy's knives and watches and have a good one.